All right, guys, we got radical notation and rational exponents today. Lots of radicals, everything you ever want to know about radicals, and then some. Uh, first of all, definition, the nth root of a number, no matter what number it is, or what root it is, a number C is said to be an nth root if you can raise C to the n power and get A. So, there you go. All right, simplify each of the following. Uh, these are ones you should probably know. The square root of 36 is just 6. That's all we're going to put. We always want the principal square root. Part B has a negative in the front, which means we want the opposite of the square root of 36, which would be negative 6. Um, if it's a cube root, you're okay to do cube roots of negative numbers, but no even roots of negative numbers. So part C would be negative 2, because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 would be negative 8. Uh, if you have a fraction inside, the fifth root of 32 over 43, take each one at a time. The numerator, the fifth root of 32, is 2. The fifth root of 243 is 3. And that's all you got to do. And then part E, um, because it's a fourth root of a negative number, you cannot do an even root of a negative. It's just not real. So you can't find us. So we would just put, I'm going to put NR for not real. It's not a real number. Uh, a few properties here that you need to know. Number one, if n is an even root and you take the uh, an even root of a number, you're going to get the absolute value, which means it's got to be positive. If it's an odd root, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. You keep the same sign. That's what, even though it doesn't look like it, that's what number two says. Number three, you're okay to multiply radicals if they have the same root. Number four, what we just did, you can divide the same radical if they have the same root. That goes both ways. If you have a fraction inside, you can take the root at the top and the bottom. Also, if you have division, you can make it one big fraction and take the root. And the last thing is, if you have a root with a number to a power, you can take the root of the number and then raise it to a power, or you can take the power of the number and take the root. It's your choice which way you go there. It doesn't matter. Okay, let's try a few of those. Part A, it's a negative inside, so usually we'd say you couldn't do it, but it's actually squared. If you square negative 5 inside, you get squared 25, which is 5. That one's okay. Part B says the cube root of negative 5 cubed, because if you take the cube root of something cubed, those are like inverses of each other. So that's just going to be negative 5, because they really cancel each other out. Part C, the fourth root of 4 times the fourth root of 5, because they're both fourth roots, you're allowed to multiply them when you get the fourth root of 20. Part D, square root of 50. Uh, some radicals you need to try to break down the best you can. 50, you can break down with, um, with a 2 and a 25. So I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to say that's really the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. I know the square root of 25 is 5. I don't know the square root of 2, so I'm stuck there. Uh, part E, Remember, you're allowed, if you have square root like 72 over square root of 6, you you can always divide if you want to. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and just make it square root of 12, because 72 divided by 6 is 12. I can break down the 12 with a 4 and a 3. The square root of 4 is 2. Don't know the square root of 3, so it stays in there. Part F says the cube root of 8 to the 5th. The cube root of 8 to the 5th, what I know, I, of course, and again, it doesn't matter which order you do it in, so I'm going to do it this way. I know the cube root of 8, that's why I'm choosing to do it this way. The cube root of 8 is 2, which still has a 5th power, and 2 to the 5th power is 32. And right, I'm going to skip over and do h, no, because there's a variable in it, and we'll go ahead and change the slide. Um, same deal, when you take a square root or a root of a fraction, you do the top and the bottom. The square root of x squared is x. It must be an absolute value because it has to be positive, so that's important. Um, the square root of 16 is 4. Now, one rule for when you use absolute value that I'll kind of remind you of tomorrow, when you have an even root and an even exponent inside and you end up with an odd exponent outside, you use absolute value. So it goes like even, even, odd, use absolute value. Even, even, odd use absolute value. Um, next slide just says perform the operations. You're allowed to add and subtract radicals as long as they're, um, but they have to be the same, I should say. They have to be the same. So don't add them yet. I can break this one, I can break this first one down because I know the square root of eight I can break down. Eight is really four and two. If I take the square root of four out, which is two, and combine it with the three, I have six. And what that leaves me with inside is a two x squared, which is what I wanted because the other term has that. And if you subtract 6 on the square root of 2x squared minus 5 on the square root of 2x squared, you get 1 on the square root of 2x squared.
and that's all you can do. We'll work on some of those tomorrow. That might have been a little tough right there. Part B is just FOIL method. So I'm going to do first here. If you do square root of 3 times the square root of 3, you do get square root of 9, which is just 3. So when I multiply this, it's really the 4 times 3, which is 12. Now I'm going to go outer. I'm going here. When you multiply different ones, you multiply the coefficients first, which is 20. Multiply the radicals. That's 6. I'm going inside. Square root of 2 times square root of 3 is square root of 6. And then I'm going last. Square root of 2 times negative 5 on square root of 2 is going to be negative. And again, square root of 2 times square root of 2 is just 2 because square root of 2 times square root of 2 is square root of 4, and that's 2. So I'm going to do 2 times the 5, which is 10, and then combine what I can. I have a 12 and a minus 10. That's 2. And I have a negative 20 on 6 plus 1 on 6. That's negative 19 on 6. And there you go. Uh, rationalize the denominator. I think you've done these enough to know they will not let you leave a radical in the denominator. So this one I'm going to go ahead and break down, square root of 3 over square root of 2. And because I can't leave that radical in the denominator, I'm going to multiply um, both the numerator and the denominator by square root of 2 because that's really just 1, so it makes it okay. Now again, here I have this on the denominator. i got square root of 2 times square root of 2, which is square root of 4, which is really just 2. And on the top, I have square root of 6. And what I've done is I've, I've rationalized the denominator. I've taken a radical and made it not a radical anymore. Second one's a little tougher. I've got cube root of 7 over cube root of 9. And what I'm going to do here, I've got to find some cube number that 9 goes into. And the cube numbers are these. This is like 1 cubed, 2 cubed, 3 cubed, 4 cubed, 5 cubed. And looking at those, I know 9 goes into 27. And it goes in there three times. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do cube root of 3, top and bottom. And what that gives me is on the bottom, cube root of 27, which is a good thing. On the top, I have cube root of 21. And the reason the cube root of 27 was a good thing is because it has a cube root, and it's 3. I'll actually show you a pretty, a little bit better, easier way to do that in class tomorrow. If you thought that was hard, I'll show you a tad bit easier way that, that we can get around that a little bit. Okay, rules for fraction exponents. Um, fraction exponents are rational exponents. The bottom of your fraction, the denominator, is the root, and the top of your fraction is the power. So if you look at this, that's a good description right there. The bottom number, or the denominator, is the root. The numerator is the power. Bottom is the root, top is the power. And don't forget this rule here. If it's a negative exponent, it flips. But better than that, it's the same. When you flip it, it just makes it positive. The denominator is still the root. The top number is still the power. Let's do a couple of these. It says convert to radical notation and if possible, simplify. Um, so part A, because it is the fours in the denominator is the root, the cube is the power, so it's just fourth root of seven cubed. You can write it that way or the other way. Part B, I have this situation, it's negative, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip it, um, which gives me this, one over the cube root of eight to the fifth power. And if you take the cube root of 8, that's 2 to the 5th power, which is 32. So that worked out really good. Let's go part C. m to the 1 sixth. Remember, your denominator is your root. That's just the 6th root of m to the 1st power. Worked out really good. And one more, part D. Uh, the 5th root of negative 32 squared. I usually like to do the root first if I can because that makes the number smaller. The 5th root of negative 32 is negative 2. And I'm going to square that, and it's going to give me 4. So be careful there. All right, now we're going to go backwards. This way I think is a little bit easier. Write them as fraction exponents or converge each to exponential not notation. Remember, uh, the root is your denominator. The power is your numerator. So what I would do here is I'd write 7xy to the 5 fourths power. And you could um, break that down further, I guess. You could, like, you could take each term and write it separately, but that's good enough. Here, remember, the bottom number is the root, and the top is the power, so I have x to the 3 six. Go ahead and simplify any time you can, and you get x to the 1 half, which is really, if you think about it, that really means square root of x. One slide, you've made it. Um, now we're going to just put exponent rules in with our other rules. Right here, when you multiply the same base, you add exponents. So it's going to be x to the 5 sixth 
times x. I'm going to go ahead and change it to 4 6, which gives me x to the 9 6. Reduce that. 3 halves. I said then an appropriate right radical notation. So it's going to be the square root, because it's a 2 on the bottom, of x cubed. Now, here we go again. Because it's an x cubed inside and a square outside, you can take 1x out and leave 1x in. And I will tell you about that tomorrow in class. Part B, do the same thing. I'm multiplying again. When I multiply, I add exponents. If you add 5 halves and negative 1 half, you get 4 halves, which is really 2. So I have x plus 3 squared. And don't forget how we square things. Or let's just leave it like that. I'm looking in the book and I left it, so I'm good there too. Part C, I have this really. I have 7 to the 1 half power. That's the square root. But all that is really a cube root, and a cube is really a 1 third power. So don't forget your exponent rule. When you raise one power to another one, you multiply the powers. You get 1 sixth. And then write it as a radical. So I'm going to put the sixth root of 7. Okay, guys, that's really quite a bit of stuff. I went pretty quickly. I hope you stopped the video some. After you watch this the first time, you can go back and um, you can skip around in it. So take advantage of that. We'll work on these in class more for sure quite a bit. And if, you know, we need more time, we'll take more time. But we'll get it, and I'll see you in class tomorrow. I can't wait. See ya.